Hello guys, welcome to my channel Knowledge Unlimited and welcome to the 6th tutorial of the Static Timing Analysis Playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about some setup time analysis example questions and all these questions are taken from a, a document which is like a, a reference uh, preparation material for the placement cells in IITs or NITs or wherever people preparing for the static timing analysis concepts okay so in this series we will take a couple of or uh, two to three videos to cover like around some 15 questions we will be solving uh, so that you will get a detailed understanding of all the static timing analysis concepts so coming to the first question um, these are the definitions okay define setup time hold time clock to queue delay race time fall time duty cycle slew skew zitter all these can be asked okay so i recommend you to refer for these definitions before going to any interview regarding these concepts they might ask and on a rough note i can say that setup time is how much time ahead of the clock edge either it can be pause edge or neck edge based on the type of flip-flop that you're analyzing minimum amount of time before which the data should become stable is called a setup time and coming to hold time like how much time a flop should hold the data so that it won't corrupt the previous data when the flop is processing it i'm, I'm giving a vague definitions of it plus uh, but please i recommend you to all go through all of this okay clock to queue delay means when a clock event or the clock edge occurs it can be a positive edge of clock or negative edge of clock based on the type of flip-flop i'm stressing that okay so when the clock edge occurs, how much time the data will take to come from the input to the output of the flop is called as clock to queue delay. And then raise time means uh, some will have a varied definitions, but it's like how much time it will take to reach from 10% of its value to the 90% of its value. And similarly, the fall time is 90% to 10% of its value. Some books also specify as 80%, 20% and all. But you please go through the definitions once again. And then duty cycle means in a clock cycle, how much time it will be on by how much time it will be off is called as duty cycle. So on top of it, you can say the uh, slew, skew and all. Skew means the delay in that path and then slew means the slope of that, which is like... Um, uh, you know that uh, inclination right when the wave raises or falls it will have some slope that is called a slow and all so you can all go through those definitions so coming to the second question which of the following flip-flops can work at maximum frequency and all the time delays that are given here are in nanoseconds so if you see the scenarios here they have given for flip-flop 1 flip-flop 2 and flip-flop 3 Okay, and for flip flop one, it is given as clock to queue delay as five, setup time as three nanoseconds, hold time as two nanoseconds. Similarly, for flip flop two and flip flop three, there are several values that are provided. So, uh, if you guys remember the formula for the setup time, it is t clock period minus t setup time, and then here t clock to queue plus t combo. So, whether here it is greater than or less than means always your data should reach faster than this so your clock to queue delay plus combo delay should be always less than t clock minus t setup time so this is the formula that we have derived since this we can answer based on the kind of circuit that is being designed with the flop but for time being let's assume that flip flop one is connected back to itself only okay so then since there is no uh, let us assume that the t combo equal to zero because it is not specified explicitly. So then T clock period should be greater than T setup time plus T clock to Q. Means if you put for all these flip flops, for flip flop one, it is eight nanoseconds, T clock to Q plus T setup time. These two components I'm adding. And then here it is 10 nanoseconds and here it is again 10 nanoseconds. So for the first flip flop, for flip flop one alone, the T setup time plus T clock to Q is very less, which means the clock period required is much less than the other two cases. If the clock, clock period is less, which means the frequency is more. So flip flop one will operate at highest frequency. Okay. So in that way, you can analyze this kind of questions. Okay. Very simple. Just go through the formula and then just try to understand how it's going to be related. Okay. And then the third question is, derive the maximum frequency of operation of the following circuit in terms of t cq t setup time and t hold time of the flip flop so this pretty much i no need to answer because i have already derived the similar kind of thing for the setup time and hold time equations if you remember there also you we have used the components like t clock to q 
टी सेटअप टाइम टी होल टाइम टी क्लॉक पीरियड एंड देन टी कॉम्बोलॉजी एवरीथिंग इज देयर बट हियर इट इज कमिंग बैक टू द सेम फ्लिप्लॉप एज इनपुट बट दैट डजेंट रियली मैटर ओके इट्स यू कैन स्टिल द ट्रीट ट्रीट द सेम लाइक हियर द इनपुट इज कमिंग हियर द आउटपुट इज गोइंग हियर but here the output is also connected back to the same flip flop so if you derive this simply what we can say is in a clock period after a clock edge it will take some time to get the output that is called as t clock to q and there might be some combo logic to see tc com and then before some setup time or before some time of the clock edge the data should occur so this is such a thing so this total is called as t clock period so from this simply we have written the definition right t clock minus t setup time should be greater than t clock to q plus t com and for hold also we similarly analyze it that when you have some two clock cycles we kept and at this time how much time the flop should hold to make it um process the previous data that is present in the flop i i recommend you to watch the tutorials where we have explained the setup time equation and hold time equation to betterly understand this but i don't want to reiterate the same explanation again and to give but to give a vague idea i have written the equations here okay and then coming to the final question of this tutorial that is for the above configuration with t com equal to 0 so the similar diagram they are saying in that diagram the t combo is given as 0 which of the following flip flops that are shown in q2 can be used in the available clock period so in the question 2 these are the three different flip flops they have shown that is flip flop 1 flip flop 2 flip flop 3 with this circuit here there is a flip flop right so here which flip flop whether 1 or 2 or 3 which will be used at what time periods they have given three time periods here so clearly no need to do anything because t com equal to 0 we know and then this will jot down our equation to t clock minus t setup time should be greater than t clock to q so t clock should be greater than t setup plus t clock to q this t clock is clock period setup time and clock to q delay now in the three scenario in the question 2 we have already written 8 nanoseconds 10 nanoseconds and 10 nanoseconds for this okay for this so it is 8 nanoseconds for flip flop 1 10 nanoseconds 10 nanoseconds for flip flop 2 and flip flop 3 so the first clock period is 5 nanoseconds where nothing can be used okay because the clock period should be greater than the clock to q plus setup time but for all those three um 8 10 10 are greater than 5 nanoseconds so it won't fit in here but coming to the second time period that is 8 nanoseconds this we can use okay this we can use 8 nanoseconds clock period flip flop 1 we can use because here it is at least greater than or equal to is the ideal formula right it can be in ideal case it can be at least equal so this here flip flop 1 will be fit here nothing will fit no flip flop but third case t clock period 15 nanoseconds is clearly greater than all the three so here all the flip flops can be fit flip flop 1 flip flop 2 and flip flop 3 so in this way uh, you just pause in little try to answer the question on your own and then uh, watch the video again for the understanding it in more clear way okay i hope you guys learned something new in this video i will continue the next video with some more interesting questions i, I will increase the standards slowly so that you guys will feel comfortable and smooth that's all for this video hope you guys learned something new see you in the next tutorial